I think he went to that guy and joined. Shit, man. What is that? Phone is not connected. Quantum computing class got clashed with tonight. Okay, I think uh, Jivan and Abhilash, if we are both ready, we can get started. I think this is about it for today. If anyone else is joining, let them join. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Jivan, whenever you are ready. Uh, Jivan, is Vinay joining? Okay, I think he's busy doing something. Oh, he's probably on a call. Okay, he says he's ready. Uh, he can't hear us. What? Okay, he's ready. We can get started. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah. And guys, it's interactive. And this is Abhilash. Let me give you a quick introduction. Uh, this is Abhilash. He's doing his master's. Where are you doing your master's, Abhilash? 
Hey, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Let me just show myself. So yeah, I'm doing masters in University of Illinois, Chicago. And uh, so Abhilash, the rest of them here are in various groups. So most okay. of them are doing astronomy, astrophysics of some sort. And um, they have all tried their hands, like I said, at different data sets before. They're just getting started. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, let's get started. Abhilash will be teaching, say, one class per week for the next maybe four to five weeks. Um, you can send maybe the blueprint you had, sort of the plan for today on through the chat box or whatever. So yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. 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 In what subject is Abhilash studying masters? Hey, hi, Vishal. I'm doing my master's in information systems with a focus on data science. <clears throat> okay, okay. Shall I get started? <clears throat> yeah, and guys, uh, I know that uh, we worked like specifically on astronomical data sets, but the reason we wanted this session is because none of us studied like the basics or the aspects of data science or data analysis before traditionally right so we want i wanted we wanted someone who has studied it that way to share the knowledge can you guys hear me yeah you just went on mute for a second <clears throat> okay so the data sets he shares might not be um purely just astronomy related so it will probably be more general data sets, and that's okay. So just learn from the perspective of what techniques are used and so on. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So thank you, Sitara, for the introduction. Uh, so if I have to start, um, hello to you all. Good evening. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, you guys can hear me, right? Am I audible? <clears throat> yeah. So. The way it's going to work this lecture series is that I will just try to give a statistical point of view for data analytics. So what data analytics is, what it does, uh, I mean, why do we use it? Why do we need it? And uh, in what domains do we use it? And what are the tools and different, uh, you know, packages or libraries or programming languages that you can use that will help you do analytics? So that's something that I want to talk about in this lecture series. And uh, today it's going to be just a brief introduction to what data analytics is. And I'll start with a little bit of introduction to statistics. Nothing, nothing much in detail, just basics of, you know, to brush up your skills, something that you probably already would know, like basic terminologies and certain basic concepts. So, and then the plan I have for you guys is that, uh, I will start with, a, as I said, I'll start with data analysis introduction today and then tomorrow, or maybe in the next class, uh, I will just take up a few uh, statistical techniques like hypothesis testing and uh, how to do exploratory data analysis, which is something the key uh, element of data analytics. And then uh, we'll, I'll give you some certain data sets that I've worked on and certain data sets that are freely available online, like some Titanic data sets or Iris data set or you know, some sales data set or uh, real estate data sets. So these are all very basic data sets. This is not something that would require you a lot of domain knowledge in the subjects, but you can just sim simply, there will be different types of variables and you can just work your way out of this and try to figure out any uh, interesting insights that you can find from this. So uh, let me just share my screen. I've kind of pre uh, prepared a presentation. So uh, give me a second. I'll just. So meanwhile, uh, if you find any, uh, if you have any questions at any point of time, feel free to stop and ask me the way I'm, I want to really want to do today is that just go through these slides and give an introduction and then try to see what questions you guys might have on data data analytics or data science for that matter and you can just fire any questions at me and i'll just try to answer uh so a little bit more about myself is just i i have uh i'm basically from bangalore and currently i'm living in chicago and uh, i'm doing my masters in with the focus on data science and uh, I have done my engineering from information science in Bangalore. Uh, that's where I know Jeevan from, who was my classmate. And uh, 
then uh, i did my uh, i worked as a technical analyst in a supply supply chain manufacturing company uh, for 3 years and that's where i've had like some uh, experience in analytics and then now i'm i wanted to move towards data science so i here i'm doing my masters so that's a little introduction about me so and uh, let me just share my screen <clears throat> uh can you guys see my screen yeah we can see it ah uh, you can see the slide right <clears throat> yeah yeah we can yeah, just want to make sure and also just want to tell you like i have a screen split screen system here so might be looking this way when i'm talking hope oh, that's fine so yeah so this is where this is what we'll start with basic introduction to data analytics uh, this is going to be a little more of theory oriented session uh, and uh, so i'll just walk you through the concepts and the idea of data analytics and if you have any questions at any point of time ask me that's why i really want to know like what are you guys to learn so that i can plan the score you know this lecture series accordingly so uh, this is what i sort of prepared and uh, so we'll have this is the agenda for uh, this session so i'll just try to define data analytics in my own way and then i'll talk you to the what are the applications it finds like why do we need it and what are your friendly tools if you want to learn data analytics you obviously want to learn some tools right so that's something that i'll give you an introduction to and then there are the key elements of data analytics which is like you will see in a while that i have split it into three four you know uh, aspects which is all the like the series is going to be about then i'll give you an introduction and then we'll see what are descriptive and inference statistics this is one of the key heart of the, i mean the heart element of data analytics so why do we need analytics is uh, is what a question that should i mean that would be driving all of us to pursue uh, data analytics in particular so the thing is that uh, when someone talks to you in a language uh, which you probably don't understand like for example if someone speaks to you in malayalam or tamil which you don't understand so you just your brain doesn't the brain in, it receives the data but it doesn't make any uh, can't make any sense out of it right so the uh, analytics is all about making sense out of the raw data so you have certain tools and techniques and aided by statistics uh, which will help you do this job so so now that there is so much data out there you there is a great need for you know trying to analyze this data and get insights out of this data so that is something that is very much needed and uh, because of that uh, there is a greater need for data analytics and uh, one second let me just yeah <clears throat> sorry for that so uh then so yeah so now let's get into what's the buzz of data science data analytics is all about so here the data analytics has associated with certain four aspects like business analytics business intelligence data analytics and data science these are the four aspects which could implement data analytics directly so you have business analytics which is more of uh, how to do your uh, you how to draw insights and in making uh, in businesses to help them make uh, data driven decisions so you have some data in hand that you want to process and get some insights out of that's when you use it in business analytics to make stock predictions to make you know predict the growth of a stock or predict the sales of a particular product or a service for that matter and business intelligence is something that would require you to have a good domain knowledge so a subject matter expertise for that matter and uh, you combine that with your it's for example someone who has a lot of uh, experience in let's say for your for your example astrophysics right so one of the very great interesting topics so if you have certain domain knowledge in this and then you you try to uh, try to um, implement so you try to find something interesting or so you use statistical tools and statistical hypothesis techniques and then try to find something interesting so that it will help you in your research so that is the key uh, element of data analytics data science is another entirely different domain although there is a uh, often there is an overlap data science is mostly about trying to teach machines to uh, whatever your your techniques different algorithms machine learning algorithms and try to implement them in making some in, you know deriving insights out of data so that is what data science is about uh, so then there is a huge rise in demand 
uh, for data analytics is mostly because you know how in the last couple of uh, decades there has been a great advancement in technology and the social media coming into picture and people getting easy easily easily getting access to all the social media platforms or be it like the for example think of it in terms of what happened in india a few years back when geo came up right so a lot of people started getting uh actually data for a very cheap price and internet for a very cheap price so they could go on the internet and try to utilize this platform and you know and basically everything you do every click you do on the internet is generating data at every point of time so when there is so much data out there and data is the new oil data is the gold in these uh, years so so there is there is an increase in demand because of the growth of data there is an increase in demand to just make some in, um, useful use out of this data and try to monetize it you know so that's something most of the companies are doing if you know what if you if you already know like what google is already doing they sell ads they collect all your data at every point of time and they try to make some in, you know uh, uh, some meaningful insight so that they can sell it to businesses which are who are interested interested parties and make money out of it i got a question yeah yep. go ahead yeah, so how to secure the data which we gather sorry can you like repeat it just quite in data your what? voice is breaking a little can you be a little more clear voice is break can you repeat that in data analytics uh, do we also learn about securing the data which we gather uh so the thing is uh, you have a different there is a whole pipeline as to how it works it starts from data gathering and then and and said you know generating reports which i'll show in the next couple slides but as an as an analyst it's not really your job to uh, worry about how to protect the data so it's just that you are have a data in hand uh, you know uh, you have collected some there is some data engineers or the ones who design tools who worry about you know uh, trying to how to protect this data or how to gather this data so get requiring uh, acquiring data from the reliable sources and try to uh, you know get it in a way that is useful for a data analyst is data engineers job so they are the ones who build you know different uh, tools as to big data tools and all these things so that they can you know uh, they focus on securing the data as well so that's something if that's something a data engineer would do more than data analyst <clears throat> i hope that answers your question okay okay thank you cool so uh then moving on so i'll just show you this particular this interesting graph i found it just talks about the amount of data that has been generating in the past few years so if you see from 2010 which is nothing but like 10 years ago you had like very few like probably uh, one or 10 one or two zettabytes of data a zettabyte is just to give you an idea it's just one billion terabyte is one zettabyte so that much of data was generated in the global uh, you know globe uh, in the internet so and the growth has been exponential so it's like in the 15 years you have like 160 gigabytes zettabytes of data now so there is so much data out there which is why there is a need for an analyst or analytics jobs and that is why it's considered it's said to be the sexiest job of the 21st century data analytics and data science <clears throat> so then we'll see what is data analytics is just some classic definitions that you pulled out so Uh, it's just that analysis of data are typically large sets of data by the use of mathematics statistics and computer software so that is what like you have these particular tools to achieve your job of drawing insights and making sense out of the data that's where mathematics and statistics and doing them on a computer software or computer tools would help you and that is what an analyst would require to learn these skills when you are an analyst you want to be an analyst you obviously want to have a good start grasp of mathematics good grasp of statistics and also certain tools of your choice which you really want to uh, learn and which would help you in achieving your goals so then analytics is also the science of using data to build models that lead to better decisions and add add value to individuals so when i say this what i mean is that uh there are companies who are investing a lot in analysts and hiring many in analytics uh, professionals and data science professionals because they as i said earlier the data is the new oil and they want to make use of this and they want to make most of it and try to monetize it in any way possible this one of the one of the classic examples i can give you is if you try to google something today and just say hey i want to buy a, a macbook pro or something so the moment you do that google lets google gets to know that you're trying to be or someone who's trying to buy this and 
you know it's just a matter of time the ad started up start appearing on your facebook or instagram or any social media platform for that matter so uh, that is something that they are tracking so they have the data in hand and they want to they they're just trying they collect the data that you want to you want to buy a macbook so that's something that it later trying to monetize they monetize by selling it to companies so that is something where analytics would come into picture <clears throat> so what are the different types of analytics that are there is the three aspects that are descriptive analytics predictive and prescriptive so what they mean uh, uh, is that in hindsight uh, descriptive analytics just something that tells you uh, that just there is some raw data out there and it just tells you what is already there right so for example if you if you try to study uh, if you are trying to study the height of students in a particular class and you try to find out the maximum height who is the tallest person who is the shortest person and uh, that's something the descriptive analytics would tell you it just you have a set certain data and it will just tell you what has already happened and what is already there so it's more of like uh, you know reactive in nature i would say and uh, so there is um, you just have this is very important because you try when you have a data in hand it's important for you to know what this data is telling you so that this can be used later in predictive analytics predictive analytics is mostly making predictions trying to make forecasts and trying to predict what could happen based on the data that you have in hand so it's like you have a certain set of data and you extrapolate the trend you find out a trend this is what is happening in this data and you extrapolate the trend which will lead you to interesting predictions and that's what most companies would invest in right now on for example like if it's maybe the sales of a, on an iphone and during the thanksgiving holiday or during christmas is something that apple would invest a lot in trying to find out so they try to find out what is the trend what the trend has been in the past 2 3 years and they prepare themselves for the next year by making the use of predictive analytics so what prescriptive analytics is that it's nothing but just trying to it just help them prepare for these upcoming situations so if you have some predictions that is that are done so how do companies or individuals or organizations prepare for that particular prediction that is predicted so as like you all know whatever is going to happen can happen whatever is can happen will happen right so when that happens how you want to be prepared for the situation is something prescriptive analytics tells you about so there are every uh, there are a lot of techniques in each of these con- each of these concepts and uh, what we will be learning mostly is descriptive and predictive analytics so this what this this is predict descriptive and predictive analysis is based out of the, the root idea of descriptive statistics and inferential statistics that's what something i'll be uh, taking you through this entire lecture series various techniques that you can use and uh, how do you can how do how can you better yourself in making interesting uh, interesting insights <clears throat> so uh then these are all some friendly tools that you use as an analyst uh if you are you are i think i'm uh, you are already are introdu- getting introduced to python so one of the uh, coolest programming languages out there you know it is very powerful and it just lets you do a lot of things in a couple of lines of code and it's uh, uh extremely uh intuitive and uh, you know you you it's very uh, powerful as well in terms of making interesting visualizations and statistical uh, techniques implementing various statistical and data science techniques and uh, it is uh, currently being used one of the most popular languages when it comes to uh, using higher machine learning techniques like neural networks and you know uh, training complex machine learning models and so python is one of the most used languages in data science and data analytics also there is r my personal favorite so this is something uh, traditional and uh, it's extremely powerful when it comes to its statistical abilities so it lets you uh, it lets you do multi- a lot of statistical uh, calculations in a very quick time as well as what it what it probably i feel personally is where, where it is better in it in terms uh, compared to python is that it can give you an interesting set of inferences when you are trying to do data science right so when you when you are trying to do data science and you implement certain algorithms you want to know what is happening with it underneath it right so just now is just that an algorithm when you feed data to an algorithm ml algorithm it just spits out some inferences and it spits out some results 
So uh, what Python does is Python just gives you all the results, but R does better in its in this terms is that it tries to draw its own inferences and gives you certain interesting uh, elements. So it's very interpretable. So and there are other tools as well. For example, like Tableau. Tableau is one of Tableau and Power BI. These are the two visualization tools, which helps you draw reports and dashboards. So this is also something an interesting aspect of data analytics, data visualization, making uh, drawing in you know uh, inferences and just making uh, some very nice visualization so that it's very appealing and understandable. Right. So if you just spit out a table of numbers, probably people would not understand, but you just convert it into a graph and just show it to them with some, you know, some good indexes and good, uh, you know, legends and mix of colors and everything. So that is more appealing. So Tableau and Power BI are those tools and you have IBM, SPSS and SAS. These are on other powerful statistical tools. And uh, then there is uh, then there is open refine. This is something that is used in data uh, cleaning and data uh, you know preparation and pre-processing. So then you have spreadsheet, uh, one of the most underrated tools ever. Uh, this something uh, when I say spreadsheet for all the MacBook users, you have your spreadsheet and uh, your for in, all the Windows users, you have your MS Excel, right? So it's something that we already we all learned as kids, you know, in the high schools and all, and something that we just left it there and is something that I've realized after coming here to this point. It's how powerful this tool is and what magic and wonders it can. Excel is one of the most underrated tools when it comes to data analytics. So then coming into different domains where you can apply your data analytics skills or data analyst is used is these are all the sectors. There is finance, there is healthcare, there's crime prevention, retail and marketing. So in each of these domains, they have their own uh, application. There is a huge scope for it. So it's being applied in various various industries as well, and even be it in sports, uh, be it in uh, food industry, be it in manufacturing, be it in uh, politics, anything you name anything that there there is data science and data analytics scope on there. So then this is something that uh, one of you just asked me about. This is the typical project workflow in data analytics. What it would look like, right? So you actually start with. Uh, you have an objective in mind you start with a question there is a problem statement and then there is uh, you come up with certain methods then you obtain data then you explore the data uh, yeah as even just mentioned on the chat people who are just joined late you can just stop me at any point and just ask me a question so uh, do you want me to uh, like give an introduction is there many people who are joined late do you want me to just like uh, brief what I've already talked about so far. Uh, no, maybe you can just uh, sort of define data analytics and then they can just follow the uh, recording later. So it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, it's being oh, OK, cool. So what I just told uh, in the past 10 minutes or so is that I was just telling these guys how what is data analytics and uh, what where it finds its use. So to give you a very brief uh, uh, definition or explanation, I would say it's something there is raw data out there and you want to make some sense out of it. So when you need some cert certain ideas, certain techniques and certain tools so that you can make sense out of this data and you can use it for some making some interesting inferences or making some business decisions. So that is what data analytics comes into picture. So this is a typical flow of the data analytics uh, project. I would say, and uh, there is various elements as you see: obtaining data, exploring data, preparing data, analyzing data, evaluate, and results. So one of the key things uh, I would, one of the things that I love about data analytics is just like it's not, it's not like you're any uh, typical uh, subject that you study because you know it's not there. It requires you to have a, a good amount of domain knowledge in, before you start working on a particular project. And it is definitely not like you have certain set of instructions, you follow them, you get these results, right? It's not definitely not like that because you it, it requires you to have an intuition about 
that particular problem in hand. So uh, when you start working on it, you start thinking in terms of how I'm going to solve this problem. What I, what what do what it does it require me to understand? What kind of uh, subject matter expertise it in, uh, it requires me to have before starting working on this problem? So based on the data, the domain that you're working on. For example, if you're working on uh, finance, uh, let's say if you're working on a data set which talks about the real estate of a particular city, for example, Bangalore. So if you have if you have a data set which tells you what are the different uh, prices of land in different areas of Bangalore and uh, how much they are you know, how much they cost in terms of various parameters like their vicinity to uh, nearest bus station or nearest mall or anything for that matter. So you have certain metrics and then you try to understand uh, what is something that I can derive out of this. So it requires you to have an understanding of how real estate works in, in a very brief uh, manner. So if you don't have to get to the depth of it, but it definitely requires you to have certain domain knowledge. So that is where defining objective is something that comes into picture and that is one of the key aspects. So when, you, when you're given a particular problem in hand, you need to think about what uh, the problem would require me to do, what is the end objective. So it's very crucial to have the end objective in mind in every aspect of these, uh, every uh, point of this, uh, you know, timeline. So, so for example, if you, if you are, uh, it, it can vary a lot. Uh, it can try, it can end up making a lot of changes in how you perceive things in each and every uh, uh, point. So uh, the the kind of project or problem you have in hand. So uh, here, one of the key things that where a data, I mean, one of the uh, where data analytics would come into picture is that if you can see some feedback loops here arrows that is something mostly a data uh, analyst would do so he's he's trying to obtain some data there uh, which is mostly an engine data engineer's job so but still there is an overlap so data analyst would start in getting the data and he has to treat his data in such a way that it is useful for him to make an analyst uh, later analyze them right so then he does exploration of the data which is one of the key aspects and then you prepare it for however uh, whatever statistical model that you're trying to predict later so then you analyze this data and then you evaluate the results and then you report these results so as you can see these are all there is feedback arrows there so it tells you that it's not a one directional process so it's just that you do this and you evaluate results you explore the data then you find out the results are not very satisfa satisfactory then you revisit your process earlier processes and you do this process again and again and again until you achieve your results so that's how a typical data analytics pro uh, project pipeline would work so this is one of the uh, the key elements probably i would say the heart of data analytics you have statistics you have data manipulation you have exploratory data analysis and data visualization so this is what i'll be talking about through the uh, like upcoming lectures uh, this entire uh, lecture series so to give very brief first we'll see first brief introduction to statistics and then we have data manipulation how do you process your data how do you prepare it what are the different types of techniques you can use uh, you know, uh, why should you, there will be some certain missing values when you're trying to treat a data and how do you treat them? Should I, should I just fill those missing values or should I not fill those missing values? And how do I treat my variables in the data? How do I, how do I make inference? Um, how do I treat them in a way such that it would suit my business requirement? And then you do exploratory data analysis, which tells you about like trying, drawing meaningful insights about what is already given in hand. So you try to compute various measures, which we will I'll, uh, lay out in the upcoming slides. And then there is data visualization, which we'll be talking about here and there. And we'll use certain libraries in Matplotlib or Seaborn and Python to do make, you know, visualizations. So this is the key uh, elements in data analytics. And uh, let's start get into statistics. So if you have any questions so far until this point of time, uh, I would encourage you guys to ask and so that, you know, I can answer so in the slide where you were talking about uh, how Python and R and Excel are different, so from yeah. the machine learning point of view, do you think Python has the maximum libraries or support for ML, or is that the right now the most preferred, I guess, programming language for those who are doing ML? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Python has a vast set of libraries, and you have you just you give a problem, you, there is a library out there. So it's Python has 
no doubt in it hands on it has like the uh, highest number of libraries there for you to do your uh, machine learning work and it was also very uh, optimized these libraries and they are like there is a lot of research that is going on there are a lot of contributors to these libraries so there is a lot of optimization in them so it is definitely faster and uh, it also uh, it require less computation time so i think python for machine learning aspects i would say is the best tool out there is so learning python would be one of the key requirements for a data analyst or data science data scientist also there is r but which is also equally statistically powerful but it doesn't have as many libraries as python and mm -hmm. it's not that cool it's kind of like old school so yeah <clears throat> Uh, isn't R specifically used in um, scenarios where finance data is uh, in question? Like it has a very specific use, right? Like it's preferred over Python for certain things. Uh, it's preferred over Python for its in interpretable uh, uh, capabilities, but it's okay. not like it is used only for finance because I have used it in healthcare domains for some of my projects and assignments. so okay. uh, so it's definitely not about the domain uh, but it's just there is always there is always a cult you know between r and uh, you know python there is a lot of people arguing about this is better that's better honestly even i don't know what is better but it's just your personal preferences so both of which are like equally uh, you know capable they have some of python has its advantages and r in certain aspects has its own advantages but it's up to your choice and uh, whatever you comf feel comfortable just pick one and move on Okay. We have a question yeah. from Ayush, and he asks, uh, uh, "How related are big data and data analytics? Are they the same, or how do they differ?" Okay, uh, interesting question. So, big data is uh, basically when you have data which is beyond the computational capabilities of your own machine, right? So, when you all you guys all have your own laptops, and you, if I give when I'm when I'm starting to uh, teach you with certain data sets. you guys can download these data sets you guys can read them you guys can see them and you guys can play around with them on your own machine which doesn't require you to have any computation grade hardware right so that is something a normal data would look like when you when it comes to big data so the data is so huge uh, to give you an idea perspective i was recently working on a text analytics project so where i had to uh, draw insights out of a lot of reviews uh, seen on particular websites we all these websites will have reviews right so uh, be it like in amazon be it like in netflix or be it in any of these domain uh, platforms you people would come go there and write reviews right so i was working on a project where i had to be uh, analyze these reviews and get the sentiment out of these reviews and uh, to give you an idea the data set that i was dealing with had uh, uh 16 million rows of uh, you know data observations so that's something if you try to do it on your uh, machine with your regular tools like excel it would probably crash your system so that's where big data comes into picture big data has its certain domain certain uh, concepts like map reduce and uh, these are all the concepts which kind of maps your data in such a way that it becomes easy to process so when you have when the scale is high so when you talk about big data there are three elements like volume velocity and uh, variety right so these are all the three key aspects so when when you are trying to deal with data uh, you when you gather data there is there is something called structured data and there is something called unstructured data so when you are looking at your particular excel sheet where you have rows and columns and you have each of those rows columns have certain values that is a structured data that you are dealing with. but the data that you available out there In the real world is not always structured so you have things like images you have things like audio you have things like text which would definitely not be structured so these kind of data is something would be and also they are massive in scale so that's where techniques like map reduce would come into picture uh, which would help you map the data in such a way that it's easy to process when you are especially dealing with a higher volume that's where big data comes into picture so that is if you it's not necessary that for an analyst to know what is big data i mean it's definitely an add on but you don't have to know the skills of big data to become an analyst i would say <clears throat> i believe that answers your question how popular is tensorflow is knowing python good enough to make use of its range of applications 
TensorFlow is something, it's very popular library. It is mostly used in neural nets and uh, all these uh, reinforcement learning techniques. So uh, is knowing, uh, so that is a very powerful library which does a lot of complex com computations uh, it would uh, require. And uh, they would, to answer your other half, is knowing Python good enough to make use of its range of applications? So is when you say that, are you, are you asking me whether uh, knowing Python uh, would surprise you to uh, get the best out of the, you know, one second, let's just, let me just read your question. Would I have to use? Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, I think if even you choose a language like such as Python and you try to uh, uh, understand the different libraries and different techniques and the syntax and everything there is, I think, uh, and as well as having a good uh, conceptual overview of what the problem you're trying to deal with and for certain techniques, machine learning techniques and algorithms, I think you're good to go. So as long as you know the concepts of machine learning and data analytics and you choose a language, whether it be R or Python, it's it's definitely, it's, it's enough. You don't need to know any other tools that I've taught you so far. So there is like, when you're talking about data science and data analytics, there is a different sort of every single process and almost uh, every single process here that uh, the block, right? I showed you exploring data or, you know, building machine learning models or visualization. These are all in out there in the real world are different particular jobs, job profiles. So there are people who just do data visualizations. There are people who just do machine learning modeling. There are people who just do exploratory data analysis. So data analysts are some who are, who are the people who do data uh, analysis as in, uh, you know, uh, exploratory data analysis and uh, data scientists are the ones who do machine learning. So if you want to learn the concepts of neural networks and uh, you know, reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence, these are all the things. This is something that a data scientist would do. But these are all the skills that would, uh, that definitely an add-on skills for a data analyst as well. I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Is it possible to analyze any data without domain knowledge? Uh, interesting question. I would say no, uh, because uh, when you when you're trying to have when you're trying to crack a problem, uh, it's the way. At least I would say from my personal experience, the way I was taught is that uh, you know how it is when you're given a set of problem, all of you are so tempted to go out there and code, right? So that's something would you sh you should avoid in, in data analytics. Data analytics. So it's a very important for you to think and have an insight initially. So when you have an insight about data, uh, that insight would come only as a result of your knowledge, your domain knowledge, right? So when you understand the domain that you're dealing with, understand the cons, uh, the problem in hand, the objective in hand, so you start having certain uh, intuitions about it, and you use statistics to back your intuitions and to see if your intuitions are backed or not. So to give you a, a very uh, simple example, uh, if uh, people are going to, are going to grocery stores and they buy, uh, you know, let's say they go they own and buy a beer, it's highly likely they also buy some snacks along with it so that they can eat. So these are these are all the different sort of small small insights that would make them make business decisions. So. When it comes to retail industry, you should know your customers. You should know your domain. When it comes to uh, uh, you know finance industry, it requires you to know your the certain knowledge of the domain, if not the in-depth knowledge. And then uh, you use your statistical methods and techniques to uh, you know prove your uh, sort of back your hypothesis. And uh, sometimes there are situations where you have a very strong intuition, but the data in hand wouldn't be supportive of that intuition. You still go ahead with that intuition, even though the statistics doesn't back you. So that's something that happens in a lot of times. So it requires it's more of a combination of in your domain knowledge as well as analytics. So if you have an intuition and your uh, statistics uh, kind of uh, supports your intuition, yes, go ahead. That's your best case scenario, but that's not always the case in the real world because let's face it, you're dealing with a sample of data, not the entire population here. So it's always a combination of both, I would say. <clears throat> what kind of data would we be dealing with when it comes to astronomy? Uh, that is something probably uh, Sitara would be in a better position to answer than me, because uh, I think, but I, what I can tell you is that uh, you have every every domain these days have a classification and prediction problems, right? So 
there is there is sort of data out there a lot of data which they are trying to classify into different uh, particular buckets right so this is something which would be general irrespective of the domain so that is the thing that is always you will find you can find in any of the domains that you can pick so but to come especially in terms of astrophysics from what i have known which is very little is that you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, data from all these uh, mainstream equipments like you know uh, hubble telescopes and all that it keeps capturing the image of the sky the far the deep skies right so and it tries to capture all these images and there is a data science uh, there is a machine learning uh, a friend of mine works in this particular domain i was in the other day I was talking to him and he was, told, he was telling me that there are certain data science algorithms they use they have in fact developed it only for particularly for uh, astrophysics domain so where they can they use this data and try to see whether the objects that they are trying to detect is particularly a star or a planet or supernova or whatever it is so that is something that a problem you would be uh, uh, you know mostly one of the problems you can find right you can find in astronomy so uh, apart from that i think sitara you would be in a better situation to answer this question <clears throat> yeah i actually think you covered most of what is required to be said and uh, mm -hmm. like you mentioned there are actually a lot of images we deal with and these yeah. are massive data sets because as you said the telescopes are capturing on a daily basis hourly basis yeah. and yeah. the sky is essentially three dimensional so it's capturing a lot of images uh, and these yeah. comes in the form of something called fits files in mm -hmm. that that is something that is specific to astronomy so i guess what might differ is the kind of files you're dealing with um yeah uh, because compared to normal data here you're looking at something like pixel values the type of data whatever right luminosity so those specific parameters might differ categorization problems like you mentioned is huge in astronomy like being yeah. able to differentiate between an elliptical and a spiral galaxy is actually um one of the examples and those those type of problems keep surfacing in astrophysics so yeah uh, that covers most of what you'll be dealing with um and yeah th therefore the processing and uh, the algorithms you'll kind of write for these data sets might be very different so i think vishal as you go ahead with um, you know looking at certain data sets you'll you'll also become familiar with it another thing is in the in astrophysics you have different columns in the data set which are correlated by some function right so in normal data that you might have for say the titanic or whatever you don't have usually a mathematical yeah. function relating them so in at least in smaller uh, data sets you might be working with there are very i guess well established uh, correlations between different parameters so how you fit the data will become a huge um, thing you know that will that's what will contribute to how good your results are so data fitting is something that i guess is specific to astrophysics and is important but yeah the other mm -hmm. other techniques you use are going to be general yeah so also you made an interesting point that kind of gives me a uh, point to add on to jeevan's question earlier so you said you talked about having different fun functions and there there is an underlying correlation between particular features or variables in your data set right so uh, to there is there is a concept called interaction in uh, data science where you do is the, what you do is that you have in the, there are certain columns or variables or features uh, you try there is there there is a correlation between them and you when you you get some insights if you treat them independently and you get entirely different insights when you marry these variables together so uh, the kind this is something that a decision of trying to marry what variable with what is something that comes out of your domain of so it's not something you can do with just a uh, statistical expertise it's some it requires you to have domain knowledge you need to understand what variables can you combine together so that i can get improve my results so i can make better predictions or i make it can draw better insights that would come that would uh, that is only a result of good domain knowledge <clears throat> so if there is any other question related to data analytics you can just ask me so i would want to keep this uh, interactive that way it's better what does unsupervised learning on neural networks does the domain knowledge help there what about them uh yeah that's an interesting question uh i would say still you would need some domain knowledge because it is 
at no matter what different technique you use whether it unsupervised or supervised neural networks or anything random forest whatever machine learning algorithm that you're talking about here having keeping the business objective in mind is something that would be that would that is extremely necessary in every aspect of your data analytics slash data science pipeline so you you start with a problem and uh, it would probably in terms like in situations like neural network where you don't have to worry much about uh, features uh, you you don't have to and, and need, you, you probably the idea of interaction might not come into picture but it's just not ab simply not about uh, implementing a machine learning algorithms and spitting out results it is also about trying to make good use of the results what these results I mean, it's no use if you just put spit out results and don't know what to do with them, right? So knowing what to do with those results so that you can make business decisions is where domain knowledge would come into picture. And, uh, you know, results without any uh, powerful insights or decisions is is pointless. So that is where domain knowledge would come into picture. Right? So. Okay, so this is something that I, I actually thought you should have... Um... Uh, anyway addressed so yeah let's just yeah. take a couple of minutes to address this so a lot of us have heard these terminologies going around and since okay. we're new to it we've got like we've heard of ml then we've got of mm. ai then we've heard of data science yeah. data analysis yeah. so yeah uh, a bit of clarification on that will be helpful so uh, the question any relation between ai and data analytics ai is like the it's probably the root concept i would say here's like the parent ai artificial intelligence and you have machine learning is one of the aspects that is derived out of it's a branch of ai right so machine learning implementing machine learning techniques sort of the thing so that is where uh, uh the, that is what the relation between data uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence when you do data analytics it can be anything you need not talk about ai here i mean you you uh, think about your human brain right so you, you when someone speaks to a language when you speak you on in, in, in a language and you understand that language is something that is nothing but analytics that is going on in your head so it, there is so analytics is out there in every uh, domain it's just been there but uh, using certain aids certain tools to me uh, to and make sense out of the vastness of data or unstructured data that is out there is what data analytics is you need not know uh, about ai like i said knowing machine learning and ai is something as an add-on for a data analyst is probably not a necessity you can still do what you do uh, of, you know uh, analytics without knowing these things but if you know them it's definitely an add-on so uh, although they 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 seem that there is an overlap between all of these things. It's definitely not like a data analyst would never do data modeling or data machine learning. You would probably be at re required to do at one point of time. So it's just that uh, there is all these things are like correlated with each other and there is a definite overlap between them. So uh, yes, I, if you have such questions like, you know, that about terminologies of different keywords or jargons, you can just shoot it out. I'd be probably able to answer them. <clears throat> these are all some interesting questions because i even in fact like before getting into this particular uh, domain even i had these questions let's continue with the ppt you can save the questions other questions for later that's fine okay so if you have any questions at any point of time you can just feel free to stop me and ask so right now i'll just talk about the uh, statistics point of fit so uh, here are some funny things that i found on the statistics so here you can see there is a meme out here which says i did a statistic analysis and found no correlation between my efforts and my rewards so this is something that is genuinely that something honestly would happen in statistics and also there is another definition which says the only science where two recognized experts using exactly the same set of data make up to completely opposite conclusions i have personally experienced these kind uh, experienced these kind of things this again roots back to why this probably happens is because an analyst would have certain of his own intuitions and it would differ from another analyst's uh, ideas and intuitions. So that is where his, uh, when you have a different intuition, intuition, you start in a different path, you start in a different direction and you pursue that direction and you end up in some results. So that is well, that is uh, one of the beauty of statistics. It's not just like you know these particular techniques and you just implement them and show you some show some results. That's definitely not it. Given the same amount, same set of data, 
each of you would probably come up with different different insights that's the beauty of it so uh, as a classical definition it's just the practice of or science of collecting and analyzing numerical data in large quantities especially for the purpose of inferring proportions in a whole from those in a representative sample so you have a sample then you try to implement numerical uh, there is a numerical data and you just uh, try to make some inferences part of it is what statistics is so you have certain branches of statistics called descriptive and inferential statistics that way we would get into now so descriptive statistics is the uh, analysis of data that helps describe show or summarize data in a meaningful way so that you can find some patterns so you have certain data in hand like i said before when i talked about descriptive analytics uh, you have certain data in mind in hand and you just when to give you a very basic example if i give you a box of chocolates you would just go about without having any intent you just go and count the number of chocolates there is right so that's something that is nothing but descriptive statistics you there is some data available to you and you try to make something out of it that be that could be anything from counting the number of observations the what is the maximum value what is the minimum value what is the average what is the median what is more so you have these uh, measures of central tendency and measures of spread which we call it in statistical terms which i will talk to you in later in the next slides that is what descriptive statistics is all about so you have certain information data and you're trying to you can see it what is basically available i mean right there which is out there you can just implement certain uh, techniques like mean median mode and make some get some information out of this that is what descriptive statistics is all about so it just kind of provides a general description and characteristics of the data and the certain uh, you have certain tools like you know uh, techniques like doing performing calculations like mean median mode as i said before and drawing tables and proportions and plotting graphs these are all the different techniques you would use to perform descriptive statistics so uh, there's another thing so this math teacher is mean median and mode so mean median and mode is something which is like the heart of you know descriptive statistics is. these are all collectively called as measures of central tendency so they all sometimes they all although seem to try to find the same thing but they are they have their own distinct they are all completely distinguished and i'll show you how so here there is a certain example around here that if you can give a set of values like 10 5 7 8 7 11 and 3 these are all the certain observations you will try to find mean out of them mean is nothing but the simple average median is the centermost element when you sort them in order and mode is the most recurring element so measures of central tendency is something that you uh, try to uh, you try to assess in data descriptive analysis statistics the most so all these are different uh, measures of central tendency and various situations and you're dealing with certain different problems you choose one of these central tendency to measure right the cent the the trend in the data i would say in a particular uh, set of observations so the choice of central tendency measure is one of the interesting topics uh, this is something that a debate you can debate over for hours as to like what is right and what is wrong what is what is the right thing to do so you have three central tendency measures mean median and mode so you would say why do i need median and mode when i have mean which is kind of telling me what is the average value for example there are situations where median is preferred than mean for example i'll give you an instant if there are like extreme scores in the outlier the data so there is a concept of outlier in statistics to give you an example uh, if you're trying to measure the height of students in a classroom and in centimeters and all of them are like in the range of 150 155 152 157 and there is one really tall guy whose height who's like who high who's who measures 183 centimeters so this the presence of this value of who's an extreme value would affect the mean by a lot so there if you're trying to take mean to assess the trend of this data you would probably not be getting the results the accurate results in fact median would give you a much more accurate result in this particular situations so there are situations where you pick median or mean one of such is that if there are some missing values for example if you have information uh, let's say the height of six students uh, and you, you do, there is a seven student whose height you don't know you have not measured so presence of such a uh, uh, value where there is no information there is no data is a very common occurrence in the real world 
so probably when you take when i give you such examples of you know measuring mean with five or six values uh that is not the case but when you're trying to actually go into the real world and get data there is always certain missing values and uh, missing uh, numbers and missing observations in such cases you cannot you cannot assess mean right without having the data you cannot definitely assess mean and not that you can just leave that data out and compute the mean that would still up in the trend so in such situations you would probably uh, use median as a central tendency measure and if there is data which is open ended for example if you have observations like uh, you know uh, people who are aged uh, you are trying to measure the age of people there is age of 22 23 25 26 and there is 30 plus you can't assess you can't quantify that data is not properly quantified in such cases even in such cases median comes into picture and mode is probably a, a preferred choice if the data is using in a nominal scale so i uh, when i talk to you in the upcoming sessions i where i'll just talk to you about the data sets and the nature of features and variables different variables you can deal with i'll talk to you about the nominality and ordinality so to give you a very brief introduction nominal scale is something which is nothing but a categorical data which is a which is a discrete set of values so for example a gender when you try to represent gender it's male female these are all not numerical values but you can still if you if you if you have thought only statistical i mean statistics is only applied on numerical entities but it's not you can apply these uh, statistical techniques on categorical variables as well and if there is underlying uh, order in between these variables they are called ordinal and if there is no underlying order it's called nominal so for example gender where there is no underlying order it's called it's a nominal scale but if you are trying to uh, if, let's say for example the customer satisfaction that would be given in terms of high medium and low there is an order in which which it it, it is assessed high is being the greatest one and low being the least one so these are all the different uh, uh, scenarios where you can use a uh, different central tendency measure so moving on there is something also called measures of spread so there is uh, there is another concept in uh, descriptive statistics which is the which is you are you trying to assess the spread of the data so spread is basically tells you how uh, you know uh, distributed the data is around the mean so you have mean of certain observations and you want to assess how or each of the data points how much they are deviating from the mean are they too far away are they as close to the mean so that is the measure of the spread when you're trying to draw a you know a, a curve of the distribution of these values you want to assess how close they are you know in term uh, with the mean in term respect to the mean so you have certain uh, uh, entities like range range is nothing but just the difference between the maximum and the minimum value in a set of observations then there is interquartile range interquartile range is something that you do uh, when you try have certain observations you split them into a uh, particular quarter in a quarter so q1 q2 q3 and q4 and interquartile range is nothing but q3 minus q1 the value that gives you an idea of how the values are you know distributed across the mean so these are all different measures which would tell you uh how the values are uh, you know distributed in observe how the observations are distributed in the particular entity so variance is again another concept which would just tell you it, how you can compute is by uh, subtracting the mean with the each of the observations and trying to divide them you square them and you try to divide them by uh, and it's the thing but the variance standard deviation is another thing so these are all the different measures which you use to measure the spread in a particular set of observations which is also part of descriptive statistics so then you give you another two simple introduction to what is sample and population this is one of the key uh, elements that you use in statistics when you're trying to deal with a problem so there is a difference between sample how you treat a sample and how you treat a population so a population is uh, a data set that contains all the members of the specified group for example if you are trying to access, assess the people all the people living in india that's the entire population but right now in the but in the real world you the uh, idea of going out there and collecting samples from all individuals is a very uh, very expensive task it's a very expensive ask and people uh, usually is a it requires a lot of time and this, this so what we do is we collect a sample 
out of this population and then you try to make uh, you try to use your descriptive statistical techniques and you try to make inferences and then you try to extend it to the population so that's what usually happens in the real world case you don't always deal with the population you mostly deal with a sample sample is nothing but a subset of the population so for example if you hear in the case if all the people living in india represents a population and then a random selection of 1000 people uh, in in the living in india is nothing but a sample so these are all the two different aspects then coming to population there is a concept of how you so when i talked about population and sample so there is a difference in how you treat sam, uh, how you measure these uh, trend, uh, measure of spread or measure of central tendency in population and sample so the sample mean has a different meaning than sam, uh, population mean in statistics so since you mostly deal with samples you have mostly worry about the sample means and sample values so here the population variance is nothing but if you can see that the, the, the formula looks almost the same except that there is a sample correction element that is done on the sample variance so when you do this this is this is something you do when you're treating it with a sample the reason why we do this n minus one is something is an entirely different uh, debate that you can have on an entirely different uh, it, it takes a lot of time to uh, even explain start explaining why they do that but to give you a very brief about it a sample is nothing but a subset of the population you're not dealing with the entire population here so if you're trying to make any uh, if you're trying to assess it and make any judgments it would become it would be arrogant to make judgments on a sample and say this is what it is when it is applicable so it's just not always the case for that simple reason we try to uh, uh, make the sample correction when you're trying to deal with the sample so these are all the different things I would just touch up in the upcoming classes where I'll uh, where I'll uh, introduce where I'll do a hands-on session on Python as to how you do uh, you know uh, go about uh, computing these values, sample variance, and you know uh, uh, standard deviation, measures of spread, and measures of central tendency. I would uh, uh, just I would give you guys a data set probably, and uh, then I'll show the, the how you can try to assess each of these uh, measures be it mean median mode and when can you use mean when can you use median and what, how do you compute the variance and how do you compute the standard deviation and it's not just computing that it's just also what do you make out of that so what does it tell you what does the standard deviation tell you that's something i would be doing in the upcoming sessions uh, then we get into the inferential statistics uh, inferential statistics is basically uh, nothing that tells uh, nothing but it just helps you make predictions on your data. So you have descriptive statistics that described your data already. Then inferential statistics is that allows you to make predictions from that data. So you have given a sample of uh, data. So you make your descriptive statistics, you measure your uh, values of central tendency and spread and you have your inside, you have your uh, uh, information, you draw this set of information and then you extrapolate this and try to make uh, judgments or decisions about uh, uh, the population that is what inferential statistics is all about so you have you choose with a sample then you analyze and draw inferences and then make generalizations about the population which might not be 100 percent accurate but 100 uh, percent accuracy is never something achieved in data analysis or data science so people are happy with an accuracy in terms of 75 to 85 percent in fact 90 percent so that is what inferential statistics is all about. So making inferences from the sample and trying to use this inferences to make judgments about the general population. So what the usual typical inferential statistics workflow would look like, you start with a problem in hand, then you do inferential statistical techniques, and then you make some decisions, and then you find your answers. This inferential statistical techniques is nothing but statistical modeling, machine learning, so all these are different concepts uh, in, in hypothesis testing. All these are different concepts that I would be touching in the upcoming sessions. So here you use these techniques and you make some decisions about the data in hand. And then you, uh, based on those decisions, you re-implement these techniques and then uh, eventually you end up with inferences. That is what inferential statistic is. So then finally, this part is something that what different techniques that inferential statistics would give you. Uh, there is hypothesis testing that I will be taking up in uh, hypothesis testing is nothing but uh, you have said, as I said earlier, you have certain intuitions about the data and you want to test, you have your own hypothesis, you have your own theory about them and you want to test if they hold good where, with the data you have in hand. So you do your certain techniques like p-test, chi-square test, ANOVA, 
all these are different tests that you use in statistic to uh, prove your hypothesis or disprove your hypothesis and um, that would tell you a lot of inferences about the data and then you proceed to doing statistical modeling or machine learning models building models on this data so these are all the different key elements in inferential statistics i would i am planning to uh, uh, uh probably have a session on hypothesis testing in probably the next two sessions if not the next one uh so that is what uh, i have for this session for you guys so we basically give an introduction to statistic and data analytics so if you have any uh questions about any statistical uh, jargons that you could be not get or probably any doubts about data analytics or uh, uh, i can share my experiences of working with data science or data analytics you can just pose it and uh, what i'll be planning to do next class is that i will take up a data set sample and uh, in fact in, uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, sitara if these guys are familiar with uh, using pandas and all these things i can just uh, mm -hmm. give you the data set and they can just try to come up with whatever they can right is that sound good that Or would actually be a good uh, assignment yeah. problem so If there yeah, are a couple so, of things you want them to play around with, and you can give them the data set, and they can come up with something. Yeah, I just want to see what all they can. I mean, uh, they can do with all the Python that they know, and just like what all inferences. I I will give you a data set of. I will just let me just refer now. You can share, see my screen. Uh, this is. I'll show you a data set. <clears throat> so i'll give you this particular data set of this is a typical data set if you can see it uh, it's a titanic data set which has uh, uh, abila you huh? shared i think um, a specific tab or whatever so you got to go back to the oh okay or, yeah okay okay or it will give you an option called share this tab instead or something like that so, okay let me do that let me do that i'll just share my entire screen in that set. So window you can share a chrome uh, you can share a windows or something so that would be ideal yeah 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 i got it i got it so yeah so this is a typical if you can see it now yeah in a minute i guess wait my gold chrome crashed wow <clears throat> oh your gold chrome crashed okay so it's not responding so i'm waiting so uh what i'll do is i'll just give you this data set uh, i'll upload it in the folder you guys guess just can try and play around with all the pandas that you know already and try to see what you can find from this so it's, it's a very typical data set used in data science and uh, data analytics uh, this is a data set which represents the uh, survivors of a particular uh, of the titanic crash that happened titanic uh, accident that happened so so you have all the names and the uh, age and the sex and the class they were traveling with whether they had siblings and the amount of price of the ticket that they paid so that is something this data set talks to you about so you can just uh, just play around with python that you know already and try to make any inferences that would be interesting unless uh, if you if you want me to go about and uh, show them how it's done in that case i can just uh, take this task up in the next class and just show them and then give a data set and in fact ask them to do much more where well, i'll be talking about univariate analysis mm -hmm. and bivariate analysis how do so you want to do it no i think a good way to go about this is uh, you can post the whole data set on google classroom so uh -huh. let them start playing with it and in the next class you can see what we've come up with and talk to us about what how it's done or how it's actually done yeah 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 <laughs> so uh, what you can do is probably uh, take certain uh, features in this data set and try to assess what is the mean what is the median how it is spread standard deviation variance these are all that simple code i can probably wow i think it, his entire system crashed he left <laughs> all right wait for a minute
हेलो या डिड इट कंप्लीटली क्रैश या माय वन दैट पर्टिकुलर टैब गॉट क्रैश एंड सो या आई डोंट नो वेयर आई स्टॉप्ड आई डोंट नो व्हेन आई लेफ्ट द सेशन सो व्हाट आई वाज टेलिंग इज दैट आई वाज जस्ट दिस हैव दिस डेटा सेट इन हैंड सो आई कैन जस्ट गिव इट टू द यू गाइस एंड यू कैन जस्ट डू दीस गाइस कैन प्रोबब्ली डू अ सिंपल measure of central tendency and central measure of central i mean measure of spread and all these things on these particular variables and just see mm. i just want to see what and things so that's what is beauty of the statistics is. so i'll just uh, show this particular uh, data i set. think your uh, either your network or your system i don't know what it is so if you're sharing mm-hmm. just check it once cuz can you see it you are presenting uh, So yeah yeah now, yeah you can see it yeah okay so this is a typical data running data set i i think one of you already one of the students says they already have it so it's something that i can download from anyone just google a data running data set and they would get it so you have certain key variables like survive uh where the these indicate the binary values of 1 0 1 indicating the peak person has survived and 0 indicating the person has not and uh, you have like peak class which is that thing but the class in which they were traveling and there is name which is not very relevant when it comes to this and then you have the sex of the passengers the age group they belong to and whether they had siblings or not and you have parents or children aboard and that you have the fair tick fair of the ticket that they paid so these are all this is the data set uh, which you know has like some 1000 rows i guess so 888 rows like boolean value for whether or not they survived right essentially Yeah, so the whether they survived is the Boolean value survive. So if you want me, I can just quickly show them if they have time as to like how to go about and do this. Uh, do they have? Do we have time? I think we've got ten minutes more if everyone's okay. Oh, that 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 be that be sufficient. Uh, let me just one second. I think I had done this some time back. Yeah, so. I'll just share my. I think I'll have to share my screen again, right? I have to share a different tab. Yeah. So stop sharing. Stop presenting. Present now. A different window. This window. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. About. To- Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll just go and quickly show like how you can do these things uh and they can just play around with the data and then come up uh, come back with whatever results they can find. right so if you can share uh, my jupiter notebook can you see it yeah okay cool <clears throat> so basically just i have written a some basic code as to like you know you i load the libraries and this is the data set that i have will be uploading so i'll just read this data set and just you can just do uh, like when you do head you'll just show you the first five rows and then you have these commands like info which would share, just show you all the different variables there is Right, there is like survive, which is just a null variable. I mean, it's an integer variable. Then you have two class. Then you have name. Then you have sex. These are all objects. Anything that are in objects or categorical variables. These are not numerical values. And then there is age. Then there is siblings. Then there is parents. And there is fair. So these are all the different values. Can you, so you do define that again? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, what exactly okay. is the difference between a categorical variable and a Okay, so when you say categorical variable, they don't have any numerical values, so they can't okay. like perform mathematical operations on them. Okay, okay. so mm-hmm. it's uh, in a in a in a rough way, these values are like, for example, gender is not something numerical, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, although there are certain times where, for example, here if you see survive, uh, it, although it is a one zero one zero variable, um, performing a mathematical operation on them would not really make sense. right so if basically they are indicating if a person has survived or not so you, there is no uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, compute a mean of this right 
on the other hand there is age which is numerical if you're trying to compute the mean it tells you what is the mean age of the people in the in this particular uh, data set if you compute the mean of the fair it will tell you what is the mean fair but you, it doesn't really make sense to compute the mean of survive or the p class variable so that is what something i'll be addressing in the upcoming classes like even though the values are numerical sometimes it makes sense to treat them as categorical that again depends on the domain and the problem in hand so that is something i'll be uh, touching in the upcoming classes so what i would want them to focus right now is that probably try to assess this age and fair variable and they can also do if they already are aware of subsetting uh, they can try to find the mean age of people who have survived and mean age of people who are male mean age of the people who are female and the mean fare they have paid for like what is a mean fare that paid by males and what is a mean fare paid by females these are all the different things that we can compute so uh, i have just loaded the data set here and this is the uh, this is the brief layout as to what are the different observations that are there in the data set and then you do an info command it will just show you what are all the different the nature how the python interprets these uh, data set these values as it has interpreted survived as an integer which is 10 uh, and then you have name as in uh, that is an object which is a text uh, string and then you have sex age siblings parents these are all the different values and it shows how it is interpreted so if there is any null values it would show there is a null value so it's a non null value then you have shape if you do a shape command it would just tell you the the dimensions of your data set you're dealing with. you have 887 rows of data and there is eight different columns you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 columns here so that is what shape would tell you so these are all certain particular commands like value counts so this would tell you if when i'm doing uh, the value counts in survived it would tell you how many people have survived so here it tells you that the one these are the 342 people who have survived and 545 have not and commands which in python you can just try to assess this you can do similarly for a different uh, categorical variable like p class here it would tell you like three people there are 487 observations with value 3 216 observations with value 1 and so on so and then when it comes to sex again to do there are 573 observation 573 people who are men and 314 are women so then there is you try to compute mode mode if it tell you the what is the most occurring one then there is mean then you have the mean of the age then there is mean so there is another interesting command called describe so what you do is if you try to you do the data set and you try to compute a value like fair for example a numerical value and you do a describe of that that would give you the different metrics like count uh, uh mean standard deviation min the interquartile range maximum and all these things so these are all the different commands and there is also simple plots like you can do a bar plot using categorical variables like here i have taken sex and the value counts of them and put them in bar plot it will just give you the male and female and there is another thing about subsetting the data here what i have done is basically chosen uh okay you guys are asking me to zoom in a bit more okay so if that's fine yeah so basically what i have done is that here i have chosen all the values in the data set where the value survived is 1 so this indicating all the people who have survived and i have tried to compute try to see the spread of the age for these particular people so when i have com uh, computed this and i have plotted the graphs what i get is that this is the set these are all the different spread age of the, the count of the people uh, with particular age group and it is for the people who have survived so if you want to do it for a survived zero then you can do something like this or if you want to do it for a male what you do is you change the variable and then you do balance syntax <clears throat> so what do you do here is that you have particular variables and you just uh, take these variables and try to assess what is the value uh, for this particular spread so here you can compute male female and then you do sex is the sex is the value of the variable yes <clears throat> so you play around with this and try to find out different spread there is 
so i'm i think i'm missing something here i'm not sure so you uh, try to assess different values and plot different sort of graphs and then there is uh, try to computing mean there is computing variance there is computing standard deviation so that's something you can do in this particular data set and then when you do that you will find different inferences uh, out of this data and you can just you know explore your results and what you can find in this so that's something you can do these guys can do well if i upload the data set is that fine uh, someone's asking a question can you we use something like enum to rename the value 0 1 to 7 yes you can definitely use that i will be showing how to do the uh, conversion of these values so what you can do is you can just uh, take all the zeros and uh, replace them with uh, dead and uh, all the ones and replace them with died so that is something that you do so there is a lot of conversion that happens when you uh, convert a numerical into uh, uh, categorical variables and there is a lot of times where you convert categorical into numerical variables based on the depending on the problem in hand you do all these operations which i'll be showing you and explaining you guys in the upcoming sessions as to how you can do it if you can do it now itself it's well well might well and good and you can just explore these things but there are situations where you in fact like given a da uh, numerical data it makes more sense to convert them into categorical and there are particular techniques as to how you do it and uh, how you group these variables there are techniques like bucketing and all these things that you do and there are situations where you convert categorical values which are represented with 0 1 and uh, you know represent them as survived or dead or like whatever the classification is about so you can do these things and you can just play around with this data uh, i'll just uh, upload this data set i'll in fact upload a few other data sets that i have as well so that way these guys can if they are already familiar with titanic a data set that i can just show something new and they can just uh, play around with it <clears throat> uh that's something that they can these guys can do and uh, in the next session what i'll be taking through is that uh, i will give a idea about univariate analysis and uh, bivariate analysis so then these uh then i'll tell you how a typical data set would look like how do you go about approaching a particular data science problem or data analytics problem to begin with what are the different variables how do you treat them how do you manipulate them and how do you uh, how do you in fact clean the data and then different sort of um, plots like bar plots and count plots mosaic plots box plots or there are different charts and when exactly to use what charts and what what are the different graphs that you can use in with the different set of features in hand so that's something these guys can do so we will be doing that in the next session uh, as of now the i think uh, we are good i think we are like cross one hour so uh, is there any other things that you can these guys can ask please feel free and uh yeah that's pretty much about um yeah probably a bit off topic but uh, as someone who's just uh, you know entering and you know i probably want to learn machine learning algorithms at some point so um, from your perspective uh, there are a lot okay. of prerequisites if you if you look up okay what are the uh, things i need to learn before i do ml right so when you're actually yeah. doing ML, how much of stuff like like linear algebra and multivariable calculus are listed as mathematical prerequisites and stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and then there is also the option of learning, for example, what is behind neural networks and um, what exactly yeah. is back propagation algorithm, what exactly. Uh, so all those things, all those algorithms in detail also you can learn. But in yeah. application, what exactly matters? So when you're actually practically using it, how much role does this much background play? Or is it necessary at all to go into all of those? So I, it is, uh, it's a very, uh, I mean, what I would say is you, you require a lot of uh, uh, good understanding of the concepts to begin with, that is for sure. But mm -hmm. when you ask about the mathematics behind it, like the linear algebra aspect of it or anything, so you need to know certain elements of uh, uh, mathematics like if you're talking about uh, neural networks or anything you need to understand how differentiation and all these things work if you're talking if you're dealing with a problem such as like uh, you know where you're trying to assess analyze an image where there are represented as pixels and matrix you need to know how the matrix multiplication the algebra behind it would work so these are all the different things that they would need to know but uh, you don't need to know them in depth it's sort of like how exactly how most of us we do in this is that uh, 
when if you are not following a formal education if you are having like a, if you are getting a formal education in this they make sure that you learn the math behind it and then only get into the uh, you know uh, concepts and then you get into the coding part of it so that's how we would be pursue these things but what you can in fact do is you can just straight away get into the concepts and then start coding it and why, why as and when you are required to learn something new you can just quickly do a google search spend some half an hour on the internet and try to know so that way you can you will still be able to get enough details to do the perform the task in hand so if you are trying to deal with a image analysis problem and you don't know how a matrix linear algebra would work you don't necessarily have to start with the beginning of the linear algebra then only can come to know the concepts that's not like that so the underlying uh, concepts of machine learning would not require you to know in depth mathematics mm. so as long whatever the high school mathematics that we are uh, given with or whatever that we have learned is quite sufficient and understanding of the statistics uh, to certain extent would help you get into the concepts so there are certain keywords like every algorithm will have its own sort of uh, measures or different jargons and technical terms that's something you can learn as and when you try to learn the algorithm so there is no such prerequisite i would say for example take my case i have no no exposure to linear algebra so what i'm learning here is that and i've got here so i was taught to learn the concepts and taught to learn the mathematics and try to design my own algorithms and then implement them in uh, in the you know when you're coding them so that's how a formal education would happen but if you don't have if you're not doing that you can still pursue this domain without having a good exposure to mathematics you can just with whatever you know uh, and certain aspects you can learn as and when you're approaching and you're dealing with a problem cool yeah so we can close if there are no other questions any last questions from anyone is weather forecasting the earliest version of data analysis or has it begun before so when you ask me this are you saying is weather forecasting is all where data analysis began or like understand your question yeah I, I, is weather forecasting the earliest version of data analysis uh, so when I, he's asking about yeah. when data analysis started as a field so uh even i don't know when it actually started or originated the origin of it or anything but i think with the or with the advancement and the massive amount of data that has been uh going on in the past few decades at one point people realized that you need to understand uh you need to make most of the data as such as like crucial elements like weather forecasting and uh, uh probably things like predicting the value of a stock or uh, uh these things uh, prediction of weather or these are all the things that have been existing from a very long time uh that is something a data analysis probably that was happening in a very uh uh you know uh, that was not very evident to us that these data techniques were happening back then because they were only used for particular purposes and uh, it was not it did not become mundane until very recently so it uh, kind of like uh, in the past few decades only like almost all the domains have started getting using the idea of data analytics to uh, you know uh, make the best and make business decisions that derive insights so that is something that's happening uh, quite frequently in the last few decades but for things like weather forecasting and scientific research all these techniques were being used in from a very long time as astrology is another classic example astrology is nothing but pure math permutations combinations and a lot of statistics in it right so that's something they were using it so what data analytics in the last few years have done is that they have come from being used in only particular domains like weather forecasting stocks and everything until to you know very uh, very uh very uh, casual things like we eat like food and how people uh, decide what food to eat what movie do you watch that is something that is not a very big pro business problem uh, in fact weather forecasting is a very uh, uh, you know high scale problem that you that is very that is very much required but your idea of what movie to watch is something not very a big problem that is something that is happening in these days so it's sort of like people have started implementing very uh, algorithms and techniques custom to particular domains and uh, that is what state data and that's how data science and data analytics has evolved in the last few decades 
Cool. Any more questions? Jeevan, any closing questions from your side? Come on, Jeevan, fire it up. <clears throat> Come on, Jeevan. I'm sure you have something. What? I asked so many questions already. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he no, did. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's about so, it. Uh, I have a question. Like, how are these guys, I mean, what are the, what do all these guys are doing? What are they learning? What are they doing? I just want to know a background about these guys, basically. Yeah, let's have a introduction because uh, Abhilash will be teaching us for the next four to five weeks. So yeah, let's have a round of introductions. Okay, anyone can start. Uh, maybe Vishal. So you can just just go and tell me like what are you trying to uh, learn get out of this course back so that like that will also help me you know shape what you want to know uh, so based on that I can just uh, shape my materials and prepare so that I can just give you what you actually need I just would want that so if you guys can tell me like quick uh, like what are your expectations what are you trying to learn what are your interests in this that kind of okay. Come on, guys. So, yeah, they probably. <laughs> they yeah. bore them so much. What time is it there? 10 45, 10 30? It's 10 40. Oh, yeah. I'll write here due to net issues. Physical, physics undergrad, interested in astronomical data analysis. Nice. So, most of these guys are like into data, uh, sorry, uh, astrophysics. Yeah. So, actually, a majority of them over here, from what I can see. Yeah, so all of them are in this um, group called Advanced Astrophysics. So uh, mm -hmm. we are trying to work on data sets together. And some of them have, like Ayush, uh, he's already done projects before where he's used, I think, ML algorithms and so on. So cool. But some of us are just learning and are kind of discovering uh, this whole field of trying to uh, do data analysis. So that's that. So that's what. Understood. So there are two sets of people. Like people such as you guys are like trying to learn data analytics so that it would help you in your research in astronomy, right? So then there is there are people like us who are just trying to learn data science so that we can just implement in different ways. So that's the beauty of it. You try to assess it, just learn it from statistical point of view, then you apply it in particular domain, or you want to use this as a tool to you know aid your research in particular domain. So there is a very so, uh, funny way of defining what a data scientist is, is that I have read somewhere that, you know, data scientist is someone who knows better coding than a statistician and better statistics than a coder. <laughs> better statistics than a coder. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, one more thing, if you can offer any um, advice as to what are the best sources? So like you said, we are oh, not- yeah. I forgot um, to mention that. So you have certain websites like um, I think um, all of them are uh, familiar with Kaggle. So yeah. Kaggle is one of the places where you can find all different uh, challenges and different data sets. And there are discussion forums there. There are multiple like uh, like challenges where there is a huge reward of like you know uh, ten thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars. So uh, currently, I'm working on a Kaggle competition where we are trying to assess the. The other day, I was talking to G1 about it. So uh you what you're trying to do is you given a set of particular image you try to come up with a caption that would describe what's happening in the image right wow. for example if the image is a, G, a gif where the cat is jumping out of from a, on a from a wall to the ground so they uh the text would uh the result of that analysis would be cat is jumping from the wall something like that so if there is a static image of a you know a bird sitting on a tree it would say a bird sitting on so this is these are all the different that are sort of challenges that are there in Kaggle, and there are so many things uh, like discussion forums, different data sets available. So, but if you want to get a good start, I would personally recommend this particular YouTube channel. Uh, there is this guy called Josh Stormer, uh, if you are aware already. So he gives you a good idea of various different uh, statistical uh, techniques and statistical. Uh, uh, concepts. The channel is called uh, StatQuest. Uh, S T A T Q U S T. If you can just look it up, I will just quickly put it in the chat here. So this is a channel by one named Josh Stormer, and uh, he's he's 
is amazing and he teaches you statistics in a very uh, funny and you know humorous way so uh, that is something a channel i personally would use and there are other websites like uh, data cam there is uh, taggle as i said earlier i'm just quickly typing it up on the chat screen and then there are uh, if you want to do like uh, if start from a very basic i would say there is uh, the site called analytics vidya that's also pretty nice you will just you know they explain things in a very uh, uh, you know very simple and understandable way rather than getting into the depths of the concept so you can just quickly if you want to get just the overview rather without getting into depths of it and uh, and just quickly get over with that's something a website you can use so these are all the things uh, these are all the different uh, sources cool so yeah i think even i would like to know what some of their interests might be uh, so nitya what um, prior experience or what future interests do you have in relation with data science or am I... okay I just know. okay yeah, go on yeah so i'm in my final year of uh, engineering and uh, i'm pursuing electrical engineering so the initial interest peaked from network analysis and ml application in and network analysis so i was kind okay. of uh, but um, ml is such um, i think i want to i mean the goal for me is to go into ml uh, algorithm mm -hmm. development in astrophysics and uh, you know physics in general because uh, as i i didn't even know that this was a proper field until someone i think uh, katie bauman she mm -hmm. developed ml algorithms to visualize black holes right so she was an electrical engineer too so that's how i knew that it was possible <laughs> so yeah yeah it's it's it's, uh, it's nice to see a lot of people who are interested in uh, astrophysics together because i have just been so far like you know interested in a very uh, casual way but i've never uh, thought of you know, pursuing it as a career but it's very nice to see that research is quite multidisciplinary <clears throat> yep yeah. so there are a lot of different fields so if you've seen that recent thing abilash the black hole image so mm -hmm. those um, you must have seen it on the news the first ever black hole image captured right really so that was actually a huge uh, project by uh, dozens and hundreds of scientists around the globe but essentially it was i, I can send you some links but there was this young lady called katie mm -hmm. who kind of led the a uh, project and came up with the oh. main algorithm to solve it so that I think this was back in uh, 2019 right yeah I this think was just, yeah this was just last year and i oh, think yeah, yeah. this would probably fall under like big data because they used mm -hmm. yeah they used information from a lot of telescopes and they had to blend it together to be able to create this yeah. specific yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of like interesting applications. Uh, I don't know if you guys have like read this book. I think Jeevan, if you might have read this, uh, there is this book from Kip Thorne, who was the who is a scientist and he's a Nobel laureate, I guess. And he he has he is the one who Christopher Nolan worked uh, with in uh, while yeah, the science of interstellar. Right? Yeah, the yeah. science of interstellar, right? So in that, like, they talk about the how they put so much efforts in his like his domain knowledge, and there are a lot of uh, programs that they build and they try to. get that uh, you know uh, that image of the, the de depiction of the black hole that they did right and that so apparently they ended up publishing a lot of papers on it so i was just reading about it they had to process like sort so many terabytes of data and there were like calculations went on till like days and that computation and they finally were able to get that image as a result which was so accurate back then that they ended up publishing papers so there is a huge scope for uh, machine learning and these things even i mean in topics like astrophysics there is definite so it's it's like nice to see someone learning machine learning with an intent right so i my i just want to learn machine learning because my love for statistics has been that so but it's so nice to see some of you learning machine learning just so that they could help them in their research in astrophysics that's good <laughs> Yeah, so I think we'll uh, close here. I just wanted to mention that Kaggle has these other uh, specific, probably not contests, but yeah, uh, specific problem sets and data sets related to um, astro astrophysics and even um, particle physics.
So if you've heard mm-hmm. of CERN, it's like the biggest particle physics laboratory in the world. So yeah. they produce like terabytes of information as well. So they had recently put yeah. up a yeah. um, challenge on Kaggle. So yeah. eventually yeah. we want to have teams uh, in Nakshatra who are trained well enough and they're comfortable with going ahead and participating in those kinds of challenges. So yeah, yeah. that's it. So now that you said it, I just want to, uh, I think it was with the or someone, right? We just spoke. So whoever was it? So yeah, Nitya. yeah, Nitya. Sorry. So I was just uh, just reminded yeah. me. Uh, there is a friend of mine who did electrical engineering from Dan and Sagar who is currently interning in CERN. So uh, I think Jeevan, you might know her as well. So uh, so she has worked. She has learned. I mean, she has pursued a discipline in electrical engineering. She sort of like uh, excelled in that, and then she got into CERN. So that's just to give you like probably you can get there one. Oh, I hope so. I mean, that yeah. that is the dream. Yeah. That's nice. Hey, Abhilash, share her contact mm. with me. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> me too, me too, me too. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so other than that, thanks a lot, Abhilash, for your time and your patience. Cool. Yeah. Thanks uh, for making sure I wake up. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just to. Tell you guys, he's on a completely different time zone, so it's morning for him. So thank you for waking so, up. Sort of afternoon, at okay. 20 p.m. Yeah. Mm. It was very informative. So, thank you. Thank you. Hope so. Uh, just, just whatever it is, just if you have any questions, uh, I, I can't really say that I'll follow up on the discussions, but I don't mostly use uh, Telegram, so I might not reply there. But you can just put it to Sitara, and she can just reach out to me or G1. Anyway. Either of you can do that. I'll try to like, follow the discussions in the Nakshatra group that I'm part of. Oh my God, there are so many messages there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Jeevan? Should we have a group for uh, data analytics or should we uh, add a blush to advanced astrophysics? There is another group. A separate group. Yeah. Or the adjacent group. We can yeah. maybe add them to advanced astrophysics. Yeah. Cool. So some of you. When you just text me or like if you have any questions or anything that you ask me in Telegram, I might not respond. So I don't use Telegram much. But thanks to Sitara, she 